Hello. Welcome to another session of Digital Surgical Pathology Slide Review and Sign Out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, coming to you from the campuses of the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center here in Oklahoma City. Our program, part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, and today's case comes from the realm of soft tissue and pediatrics. Um, the patient is a seven-year-old boy who's noted a uh, mass in his forearm that has begun to bother him, making it difficult for him to run, run the game controller. Um, and so he comes to uh, medical attention because his parents then uh, discover this mass and uh, bring him in. A biopsy is performed. It shows a spindle cell neoplasm that is concerning for sarcoma, and the patient is referred to our institution where a resection is done. Here's a, a nice representative section of this tumor, which as we can see at low power, has a prior biopsy site here, and a nice encapsulated area with a fairly sharp and distinct margins. A fairly blue appearing tumor uh, with some uh, hyalinizing areas here as well. Uh, we don't see any uh, immediately involved skeletal muscle. It seems to be in the fat. As we look at this tumor on higher magnification, uh, we can see uh, that we have quite a bit of very <coughs> hyalinized uh, type collagen um, and uh, a very dramatic spindle cell pattern with almost a pseudo-angiomatous appearance uh, with little slit-like spaces. <clears throat> there are um, um, a modest degree of uh, nuclear pleomorphism, a few enlarged cells, uh, variable uh, herringbone uh, areas, perhaps like this here. And as we look around, we can see uh, that it's nearly solid throughout <clears throat> uh, with this fairly uniform pattern and a very remarkable hyalinization <clears throat> and collagenization of these cells. So uh, with this appearance, fairly uniform type pattern, uh, a number of things uh, would come to mind uh, as we might consider what uh, this lesion uh, could be and what the best classification uh, for this ought to be. If we think in general of uh, pediatric spindle cell tumors, uh, there are a variety of things that may uh, enter into our differential. Uh, sclerosing epithelioid fibrosarcoma, uh, fairly uncommon, but uh, something that can have a very uh, fibroblastic uh, appearance. Rhabdomyosarcoma, although usually um, of uh, somewhat different morphology uh, than we see here, uh, does have a variant that could be entertained. Solitary fibrous tumor might have this appearance, but is relatively uncommon in the pediatric age group. Certainly synovial sarcoma would be of consideration here of the more uh, uh, monophasic type. And then we might think about uh, nerve sheath tumors, Merkland peripheral nerve sheath tumor, or maybe a triton tumor, or less likely a spindle cell melanoma, carcinoma not terribly likely in this age group, and then various other uh, less and less common uh, lesions uh, might be considered as well. So with this uh, in mind, a number of further studies were done, uh, including uh, both some uh, cytogenetic uh, studies as well as immunohistochemistry. Uh, I'll share with you just one of the immunohistochemical stains, which we see here. Uh, this, as we can see, is a nuclear stain, uh, and it's uh, lighting up most all of these uh, spindle cells uh, with positive nuclear staining. This is a stain for MyoD1, uh, indicating uh, myogenic uh, differentiation in this tumor. Uh, and that's moving us uh, fairly quickly into the um, rhabdomyosarcoma realm. Um, other stains that were done, uh, Desmond would show some positivity in this tumor. Uh, S100 was negative, excluding most of the nerve sheath tumors. Um, and uh, previously, uh, PAX uh, fusion genes had been tested uh, as well. Um, so uh, our leading consideration here is that this is a sclerosing or spindle cell variant of rhabdomyosarcoma. Uh, this is a rare variant of rhabdomyosarcoma, perhaps accounting uh, for only 5% or less of all rhabdomyosarcomas. Previously was grouped with uh, more of the umbrinal rhabdomyosarcomas, but has been recognized to be somewhat distinct 
uh, both due to cytogenetics uh, as well as uh, the morphology. Uh, its characteristic uh, morphology is this very hyalinized and corded pattern uh, with a dense sclerosing type collagen as uh, we saw in our slide. It does occur in a rather broad age distribution as well as in a variety of locations, mostly in the head and neck, but also in the extremities. Uh, adults tend to see it uh, more frequently in the head and neck, uh, whereas pediatric uh, patients are more likely to uh, see this arise in the extremities. Uh, and uh, the prognosis is somewhat worse when it arises in the head and neck. Um, uh, it is negative for Pax fusion genes as well as for FOXO1 uh, fusion gene, uh, which would put it into a different category. Um, but it will have mild D1 mutation and MDM2 HDMA uh, amplification that can also be seen. Uh, <clears throat> So with that, uh, our final diagnosis is spindle cell sclerosing rhabdomyosarcoma, uh, rising in a young uh, male patient. Males are more frequent. Uh, and uh, we'll welcome you to come and uh, take a look at these slides uh, and study them on your own uh, at your own convenience. I'll put the link in the uh, description below. So thank you very much for joining us today. We hope you enjoyed that uh, brief little vignette in soft tissue pathology. Uh, please uh, feel free to comment on things that you might have thought of or uh, other considerations you've dealt with with uh, spindle cell tumors in uh, pediatric and young adult patients. And we hope that if you like this, you'll also subscribe so that you'll catch uh, future releases on our channel. So until next time, uh, thanks very much for joining me.